Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you for pointing it out. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Actually, uh, I forgot to go online. So let me quickly revise it for the people on the YouTube level. And that way, I was only seeing my studio people. I'm sorry about that. So what we are discussing today is strands. And these strands are uh, these strands are basically the output which we are trying to evaluate as to did our process happen in the right manner or not. Like the way I mentioned that we went through area of development, which were the eight areas of development, which ultimately has given us this uh, understanding that what do we expect our children to grow with? What do we expect our children and ourselves to have the attributes? Hence, we had that eight areas of development. And the next we study the specific developmental chart vis-a-vis -vis our age brackets. So in that age, there is something specifically we must focus on our child. And that's how we looked at the zero to three was safety and security, four to five was, uh, uh, uh emotional stability and then it was social skills and all that so these when you look at that chart you will understand how that eight areas must be reflected and focused through these uh age-wise specificity and then we learned how do we implement these things and for that we shared what we call as five teaching methodologies and those teaching methodologies can be used by every adult not only as necessarily in in the schools or in educational institutions, it can be used by every adult and even in the <clears throat> any organizational structure. And then what we are doing now is evaluating that did the process happen properly or not? And what the final outcome has come, does it reflect what we actually aspired for? So these are the five indicative output strands which are going to help us in assessing whether our process has succeeded or not. Have we delivered? Have we got what we intended for? And these five strands can be used by anybody, whether it is an educational institution, the corporate world, or at home, even at community level. So these are five strands. Now, the combination of it can be utilized in any way. But in educational institutions, for children specific, these five are all expected to be there. But in the corporate level, when we talk about it, people can choose whichever way they feel comfortable and they feel like evaluating themselves on. So today, we're going to look at these five specifically to understand each one of them. Now, as I already said, it is wellness, effective communication, citizenship, intellectual empowerment, and aesthetic expression. Now, these five, are in no way in chronology. They are all equally important. So we look at them one by one to understand each one what it is. And that is how I was going to the next slide just to tell you if you have a piece of paper and pen with you and you can join the journey to make your own notes and to start writing from that perspective. So first we look at wellness. And in that wellness, let us look at developmental goals like if I have to evaluate what wellness means, let us put that into the developmental goal. What do you think? What do you understand by development of wellness? And then we look at the values inside to it. Like what does, when I look at it from values perspective, what flavor, extra flavors do I get by wellness? And then we look the implementation of values and that is value orientation. So then we look at how do we implement the programs to arrive at wellness. And that is the third last column, which says values orientation. So these are the implementation words we'll show, which will tell us about what is values orientation. And that's how we'll go about. So you are all welcome to you know write it and uh, share your you know, stories with us. And if you have any suggestions or questions, you can always keep uh, posting it as we go along. So let us start with wellness. Now, as I was telling you, 
usually wellness is taken on a very physical level we talk about wellness of body we talk about exercises we talk about good food we talk about you know hygienic environment we talk about exercises in that way right in that program we have got variety it can be a, a gym it can be a zumba dances it can be yoga anything which we call but if you really understand and look at deeper into it then you realize that these are all talking from a physical perspective and that incidentally is not a complete wellness program you know if you have muscles but you don't have the capacity mental to hold on to this then your all your physical powers will not have any value like there was a long back a story you know a person uh, climbed mount everest and he really scaled it and for that he had to really practice for a year he was in a very tight regiment he went on doing exercises and prepared himself very well he was perfectly physically fit and he went and climbed and scaled it when he came back after a year i believe he was in a hotel in europe somewhere and he got to know that his girlfriend has run away with somebody else because she couldn't wait for one year or whatever reason maybe and he jumped from the terrace and he committed suicide now when you read such kind of stories and there are many i'm sure you can read it that puts you in a thought that a person who has such a strength amazing strength to climb mount everest which most of us can't even you know tolerate we can't even scale half of it we can't even sustain ourselves in that environment which is so difficult what happens that he got so emotionally weak that he committed a biggest crime of suicide just because somebody betrayed him so if you really understand can i call him well can i say he was well because he was physically so fit unfortunately not so what is wellness if i look at it in a deeper sense in a proper way i realize that wellness of physical body is not possible unless and until i have the wellness of mind so wellness of mind is more critical to develop and to deliver the wellness of physical being so that is what is wellness so let us look at it now how wellness has been described so you can get an idea about it okay now from the developmental goal perspective it says physical health and development and emotional well being and protection and safety of all so when i say well that means i am able to do all of this correct now from a values perspective when you look at it how do i call a person well i look at a personality which has a high self esteem and it is grounded with moral strength which is self confidence and is ready to serve and sacrifice so that is wellness so only when i am i have this personality traits then i can say i am holistically well otherwise i am physically fit but am i well have i achieved the high standards of wellness and what do i do to achieve them these are value orientation now people always question these things that hey these are good to know but how do you practice them now for that i have this last column now these are the words which we help people to understand and practice them in day to day life so in the schools we have various programs which inculcate these attributes to them in the organization also we have now i had been to panama and uh, one of the clients we had was you know panama canal and they were very fascinated by their vision and mission format and they understood the importance as a management they understood the importance of vision statements and they understood the importance of value statements and if you go to the panama canal uh, organization site everywhere including their main office head office and uh, your kitchens your toilets your everywhere they have these words which are specific to them what they believe is pasted all over because they understood the importance of vision of importance of value statements 
Now that is how you have to drill into everybody day in and day out, day in and day out, so that that whole thing starts becoming part of your personality, part of your you know growth, and that is how we achieve a standard of wellness in the whole organization. Imagine everybody starts behaving in a disciplined manner. They practice cleanliness, okay, and then we teach them a little bit of service activities little bit of sharing and they get a flavor of sacrifice and they are allowed to take initiative become innovative try new experiments give them the opportunity to make mistake and you develop courage and then you learn how to respect each other by you know by collaborating cooperating and working together and they realize that individual nobody can individually work so you have independence dependability with each other even at one time you are working independently, but you realize that my independent work is also not possible without the help of others. So even if I, I work like a writer's job, suppose I'm writing a book and I think that, hey, book writing is an individual task. I don't need anybody. It is highly mistaken notion because what can you write if you are not exposed to the nature, the surroundings, the world around you? So you take the content from the world, so you are dependent on them. Then when you write it, you need somebody to read it. And before reading, you need somebody to print it, somebody to publicize it. So even an activity like writing, which you feel it's mine, I need nobody, that is itself dependent on everybody. So there is interdependency everywhere. So it is wrong to feel that I am alone. These are my reflections all around. So I am interdependent with the whole creation. And that is the beauty to understand. So if you notice now, I'm just spending a little time so that when we do the other four, I would like you all to get into you know, thinking ahead of me and uh, welcome you all to share your uh, you know, feelings about next episode, next uh, uh, milestone or uh, strands. So as we just revise it, so wellness in a normal sense means physical health and emotional well-being. Now we go into a self-esteem standards in wellness. That means a person is so aware of his surroundings, his culture, his heritage, his nation, everything. And that gives him the self-confidence and the moral grounding to be ready to help and serve others. And that ability to do that, we call wellness. And how do we practice? Is by implementing these programs. Okay, so that is wellness for us. So let's go into the next one. Effective communication. Now, usually I'm used to having a workshop scenario, so I would have asked you many questions, but I'll pause for a second to give you a thought. Think, what is communication? And then we'll look at what is effective communication. So in a normal sense, we always talk about communication as a message being relayed from A to B, correct? But it is incomplete. So a message gone from A to B and the B acknowledging that message that I have received it to A and A confirming it, yes, you have received the same message is communication. It is not effective communication. People interpret that as an effective. I said, no, because that is communication. If the communication has not happened, forget effectiveness. So if that has, this process has not gone, that message leaving from A to B, B confirming that, yes, I understood, and A acknowledging that, yes, what you have understood is that what I conveyed, that cycle makes it communication. Otherwise, there is a breakdown of communication. So then what is effective communication? Then the next jump. How do I call a communication as an effective communication? Now, when this same process is done with empathy, done with the sensitivity of others, then with keeping in mind that my communication style, whether it is word, action, or emotions, or whatever, does not create negative impulses, does not create hurt, 
does not disturb the peace and tranquility of the environment. When that happens, then you enter into the stage of effectively communicating. When I use the words which are not hurtful or you know, showing somebody low that I will use certain words that you don't understand, so I feel superior about it. See, all these complexes create an impulse of understanding that, hey, you are wrong. And that is what I call, it is communication true. Because you conveyed, they understood, and they conveyed, and you accepted that, yeah, you have understood now where I stand and what I, I am speaking. But effective communication is not that. So when I call it effective communication, it goes a step higher, wherein now I have feeling that I have understood what the other person is, at what level they are, and then I use my words or my expressions or my gestures to convey the message in a manner which is soft, elegant, respectful, and which is not hurtful, and the other person enjoys it. So when this process happens, then we call it effective communication. Now again, we can train people in understanding, evaluating themselves, and finding out whether the usage of my words is effective or not. Sometimes you can find people can communicate even without uttering a single word. Just by look, they can communicate. Nothing is required. People can be sitting far off places you know, in different countries, and you can connect. That is effective communication. So how do I achieve that? So let us look at now, what does our research tells us about it? So effective communication is listen with understanding, converse effectively, and emerge reading abilities and communicating their thoughts and ideas. So this is a normal understanding of what is effective communication. Listen with understanding. That means you have to understand, not to respond. Don't listen to respond, but listen to understand. And converse effectively. And that happens when you do a habit of reading and communicating your thoughts and ideas and all that, right? Now, values perspective. Patience in listening. So now, first thing is, you must have the patience to listen. Do not presume a person starts speaking and you presume you have understood him. So patience in listening. Exhibit empathy for others. Practicing unity of thought, word, and deed. That means whatever I believe, I speak. And whatever I speak, I act. So imagine if there is a unity of these things, then only my communication is has conviction. Then only what I speak, people should believe. People will have following you because now they understand that the only words they don't follow. They understand the impact behind the words. They also impact, they understand the, uh, what should I say? They understand the emotions and the conviction behind your words. So that is the beauty of practicing unity of thought, word, and deed. Of course, soft and comforting speech and Precision and thinking and communication. So like you want to say one word, don't use a full sentence to convey it. You want to say something, how can we precisely make it like that? So that becomes your precision. And how do you practice it? Empathy, sympathy, creativity, curiosity, honesty. These are the words which we tend to take for implementation programs. And that is how we can help develop effective communication. Let's look at the third one, intellectual empowerment. Now, what is empowerment? If you, if you really look at it from that perspective to understand, we always talk about it that we should empower our children, we should empower our employees, and empowerment is good. Yes, I, I also agree. And uh, I don't think anybody can debate on the importance of empowerment. But what is important is to understand what is empowerment. Is empowerment giving an authority for a, of somebody to decide? Is it a freedom to do what they want to do? Is that empowerment? So when you say that I have empowered my 
child or my employees or anybody to do as they feel right, which has a premise, which has an understanding that you have already conveyed what is expected. You have the faith and the belief that your people, your children or your employees or anybody has the right amount of knowledge, right skill sets to execute, to understand. Only then you can say, yes, go ahead and decide, make a choice. But if the empowerment is only to just get rid of your responsibility, then it is not a real empowerment. So empowerment has this hidden inside. So when you say, I want to empower my child, that means you have certain steps behind it. And that is that you have to first provide your children or your employees or anybody with enough knowledge, skills, and necessarily interpersonal skills to deliver and to execute. Only then I can say it is empowerment. Now, what is intellectual empowerment? Intellectual empowerment is very important because most of things or everything actually must go through our intellect, not with our brain, not your mind. It is called intellect. And what is intellect in that manner is an ability to discriminate in a very simple way. The ability to discriminate that is part is intellect. So now we say that whatever knowledge we have gained, whatever experiences we have imbibed, how do I use that? And that it becomes empowerment. Do I have the ability to use my knowledge, to use my experiences, skills which I have learned to help others? Then I would call it an empowered intellect. So now let us look at what our research has given us so that we get a little better clarity. Now, developmental goals, understanding of literacy, numeracy, and science concepts, and other academic areas. So, in a professional environment, it is basically your content. So, do you have enough knowledge about the product and services that you are engaged into? And learn strategies for active exploration and interaction. And do you have an opportunity to explore and validate what you have learned? and use the technology to enrich and enhance your experience. So you must have that ability also to execute. And for execution, if you need something, and especially in today's environment, wherein everybody is you know, influenced and surrounded with technology, you must have the ability and the know-how to use that. Values insight, exhibit understanding in the divinely gifted ability of mind. Why do I say that? Is because Humility is one of the greatest traits of a human being. And unless and until the human beings understand and have this humility, that all this activity which I am able to do, all that understanding I am able to exhibit, all that uh, you know, skills I am able to have is actually a gift. Because there are millions of people like us who could have similar strength, but they are not able to execute it because their environment is not suitable. Okay, It's because we are born in a certain way. I am born in an environment. I am grown up in an environment. Hence, I have an edge. This environment is also a gift, a blessing. So I must be always humble about it, that if I am able to do something which others are not, so I must understand that it is a gift to me. And the more given to us, that means more is expected for us to deliver it back. So that is why this thought comes that you must have this understanding that it is a divine gift. Even the mind is a divine gift. And development of various life skills guided by the principle and skills and technology should be aimed at enriching and ending lives of all but not be limited and motivated by mere self. So which means it must have that broad vision, which, will, which is to cover everybody. So if I have learned something, 
I should not use that learning just for my own benefit. Can I share it with the millions around me? And that becomes empowerment from the values perspective. Now, how do we practice it? Those are the words for you. Now, in that, I would highlight inner silence. You know, that's why I always talk about silence sitting, uh, light meditation, or whatever you want to call it. These are very important to assimilation. So if you think that you want to move into intellectual empowerment area, you must provide an environment of silence at workplace, in, in schools, and in home. And that silence is the key for assimilation. You cannot assimilate information. You cannot you know, process information unless and until you have learned the art of inner silence. So inner silence is the key. And then you have, of course, the humility, contentment, self-acceptance. All these are the words which will help us to develop empowerment. OK. And the last one is aesthetic expression. Oh, no. Fourth one is aesthetic expression. Now, when we talk about aesthetic expression, normally what we get in our heart and mind is, you know, how artistic are we? You know, so that's why in our educational institution also you look at when you talk about aesthetics, it normally comes out as art and craft, painting and dramatics and all that, because its expression is like that. But I need to, I, I wish to point out that uh, those are expression of aesthetic expression. Those are aesthetic expressions. But where does it originate from and what is truly aesthetics? That is something to be thought about and contemplated on. So when I talk about aesthetic expression, it is when you can feel the same thing from a different perspective within your heart. And that is when you are connected within, when you can feel that, yes, you know, it is mine. There is an originality about your expression. There is a, see, like same story, if I have to tell, both uh, some, I can read a story, people can read a story, but you will find somebody, every narration will be different. Somebody can use emotion, somebody can interpret it differently. Why does it happen? If the story is same, the message communicated same, then why does the expressions change? It is because the way we connect with the story is different. And anybody who connects it differently within will express it differently. Take an example of any song also. A song sung by same song, you can use the same raga or the same style of singing, but somehow you will find that the feel of the song is different. Even though the technicality is the same, you're technically singing it exactly the same way as it is supposed to, but the feel of the song becomes different. Why? It is because the connection, the way you have connected and understood and internalized the song is different. So when we learn to internalize ourselves, when we understand how to connect with that, there comes the aspect of aesthetics. So if I had to really punch it and summarize it, aesthetic expression is an expression of the self. So the more I connect, more I like internalize it with myself, anything, and then the expression which comes out becomes aesthetic. Unless and until it is connected within me, unless and until I relate to it, unless and until that thing becomes mine, it cannot be true aesthetics. It can be reproduction, it can be artistic, it can be, you know, good painting, all that can be possible. But when you say, ah, it is different, it is unique, it has that innovative, you know, streak in it. And that aesthetic sense comes only when people learn to connect within. So let us look at it now. What does our research say? Discover and explore their creative talents through the visual arts, talents in music and dance, a creative talents using drama. So this is how the developmental goals are defined for aesthetics. Values inside gives us a little better and a broader perspective. Who do we call aesthetically imbibed is 
an individual is expected to manifest an integrated personality and all round persona and that character is expressed through the following three areas and that is being subject matter expert sport and field music and art and culture so these three areas if you really look at it even in the corporate world it makes sense like i i would like to highlight that even today most of the bigger companies even yahoo's and all that i was given to understand that everybody is looking for in your resume extra curricular activities that you are engaged with what you do after the office hours what you do in your evenings and weekend is sometimes a very key factor to be selected or to be rejected because the technical skills many have it but the aesthetic aspect is the key which tells us whether this person has those attributes to gel into the environment or not so if i have a habit of going for some social work or a service or a you know helping or charity those elements does add a flavor into the organization so all these things really matter in life and you cannot separate and say that okay i'm going to do all of that after my office hours it doesn't work because that empathy which you generate by going to a service project or that understanding and the passion which you generate by doing some service element or some kind of charity or some kind of sports event see that passion and that feeling of gratitude you bring into your work also so if you have gratitude then you have gratitude in everything you do it is not just that you are doing gratitude only in one activity it's an element of attribute of gratitude which comes through everywhere and those extra curricular activities if i may call so they actually are better in enhancing and in, in inculcating these attributes hence for aesthetic expression to connect within we also evaluate in evaluation we understand that how many of our staff or our children are engaging into other matters how strong in their subject matters how they are good in their physical activities and how good they are with their you know art and culture so all of that mixed together creates aesthetics now to help you have those following words creativity innovation friendship kindness so you can choose the words you like or you can add more words here that freedom is everybody so you can look at it what do you think you need in your in your setup be it an organization be it home or be it a school or colleges you can choose and you can take it from there and that is your aesthetic expressions and the last one is citizenship now citizenship as i was before mentioning quickly see unless until that it's a it's a kind of a broad minded feeling i must have a connectivity with my motherland with my country with my culture see i should be proud of wherever i am so if i am a canadian i should be proud of being a canadian if i am an american or a trinidadian or an african or you know indonesian or whatever the point is am i proud of my country am i proud of my culture am i proud of my heritage some people may say oh it's chaotic but the fact of the matter is the chaos and all that is everywhere but a country cannot be made without a solid base of some beauty and that cultural heritage which we have got we must be proud of there is a long history of every country obviously some have got longer and some have got much richer but everybody must have some connectivity with their land and that pride feeling that feeling of belonging that i have this will inspire you to lead a much better life and that is what citizenship is all about so citizenship not only tells you that a passport in your hand that you can you know you can flash and say i am so and so but it also has the backup of all the culture which comes with that so if i look at it it is a socially acceptable behaviors attitude of cooperation respect for self and others 
and in their own culture and respect for others. From values perspective, an individual infused with human values in all their thought, word, and deed, are guided by a higher aim of life, lives in accordance with moral and ethical code of universality, and believes in oneness, universal brotherhood, and aware of responsibility. See, that feeling of broadness, that I'm no longer a person of one community or one family, but I belong to a big social network or a big nation. And then I'm also part of the universal community of brotherhood. See, this is what a citizenship is all about. So you can start with the citizenship of a country, but we must also aspire to become a citizenship of the world, a citizen of the world. And that is where the broadness, the broad mindedness and, and encompassing all the cultures and respect for everybody will come in. Now, how do we develop is appreciation, brotherhood, compassion. So these are the kind of implementation words. Now, imagine yourself, if a person has these five in them, say wellness, he's well in body, mind and spirit. He has that sense of effective communication. He understands and empathizes with people whom he interacts. And he has a right attitude to speak and, you know, emotions, understanding. He has the intellect empowerment. He has the knowledge, he has the skills, and he's empowered to help others. And he has the love and passion and the knowledge about the country. And he has that heart, softness of heart. And he expresses it in a unique manner because he's always connected within. What would you call a person of this nature? Imagine if a college or a university or an organization focuses on this and say, we want to deliver a product which is like that, which has this element of empathy, of skill, courage, together in one. In a simple words, we say when all these five elements are in one place, we call that as character. So this is what we define as the character of a person. So all that what we saw in the beginning, which we call learning milestones or developmental milestones. And then we came into the learning milestones of age bracket. If you take everything, the journey must end in character. End of education is character. End of journey should be character. So this is what we arrive at when we move from that process. And this is the end product. And this is why, this is why I keep insisting that to evaluate in fact, in education systems also, I always suggest that these are the five indicators which must be reflected on the mark sheet, which should be presented. So we can tell my child is holistically developed. Why? Because he has all these five. When he has got 100% in all of them, then I would say yes. Now that is holistic and that is what is called character of a person. Now, in the corporate world, in the business environment, you can pick and choose depending on your environment. But actually looking at it, all of them have an relevance there. So you also need people with wellness. Other, they'll take a lot of leaves. There'll be high iteration. There'll be so many problems. If you don't have good communication skills, you will have a problem day in and day out between staff, between staff and customers and clients. And if you don't have citizenship, that ability, that passion for your own you know, place and country and company, then obviously you will never be loyal. You'll never be able to deliver the best of you. Intellectual empowerment again shows you the same thing, that if I give you skills, if I give you training, are you able to use that knowledge for the benefit of the organization and for the world? And are you able to do all of this with an expression which is more empathetic, which is sympathy, with, which has the ability to convey in the best possible manner without creating ripples of hurt and discord and create you know, excitement, positivity all around. Now that is the whole game. So I hope I have taken you through a journey. I wanted to really sketch it out, a whole process starting from areas of development to the strands as an output and that should give 
everybody a kind of perspective as to what is the whole learning curve and how do we achieve fulfillment now this is an end part and the moment we start arriving at these outputs you will start experiencing the fulfillment in life and in work so that is why i have a punch line values in action because we all know values and putting that into action is the game for life and for living so it is both so this is how i have uh, you know wanted to convey that so this part i would like uh, to hear from all of you about what you think about it and if you have any further questions or clarifications i'll be more than happy to you know go deeper into these things obviously at this uh, interactive sessions i can because i don't have much interactions that way so i can only convey the concepts the implementations i am able to tell little bit but uh, i you know it has to be done to see so uh, if anybody is interested they can always contact me but uh, that is what it is so if you can if you have any questions so far i would be happy to address them and if you have any thoughts you are welcome to share so i'll just wait for a few minutes to see if anyone anybody wants to share something and i uh i am also let me take this opportunity also to uh, share a thought has come and out of the feedbacks that i am receiving uh we have done many of the workshops before in terms of uh, cia uh, mind and other things and uh, people have expressed their interest in uh, you know going deeper into the topics and trying to see the pl practical implementation of those so what i am uh, like contemplating on based on your feedbacks is uh, that i would like to invite few of you to come on to the studio here with me so that way when i say studio this is what i call studio and uh, it's not through the youtube but it is on this panel so few of you i think maximum of four to five people i can accommodate at one time so we can take a topic or different questions and it will be nice to hear from all of you and as a panel we can discuss and if others have any suggestions they can always come back and people who are interested in joining uh, can send us a note and i will be happy to invite them so we will start with only 4 to 5 um one because the limitation of the studio and second a smaller the group we can manage better and everybody will get a chance to express properly so that would be my next initiative and let us see again based on your feedback and response uh, we can uh, plan that and execute it accordingly and we can choose any topic or we can choose even the summary of all the topics we have done so far so we can take topics and questions and then put them together so any questions so far okay there is a question from let me show how do we know that whether we have all these qualities and if we are low in any and how should we improve them uh see that is where the strands come in so uh, viva if you have uh, looked at our other workshop of uh, uh milestones that would give you an mapping an idea about connectivity for example if you talk about wellness wellness is an output strand but the the input of that wellness comes from other out of the eight many are included in the wellness for example physical fitness is there that you know physic physical is there emotional is there as an input of uh, uh, area of development spiritual is there so if you look at those i'm just giving an example even if you take the three of them <clears throat> physically fit emotionally fit and spiritually fit if those three elements are done well then you will ultimately arrive at your wellness factor so that is how you you go and you map it out and you understand 
that if I am not feeling well, or if I am feeling well, how do I know? Then I can evaluate, go backwards and see, have I done what is required for my physical development, my emotional development, my social development? And if I have done all of that, then I should have the symptoms of wellness. And those I have already given you the words on the last end, which explains the value orientation. So if you are able to practice those and able to reflect those words, that means you got it. So if you are able to do show uh, physically well, cooperative, helping nature, then you are a you are well being. Your well being is taken care of. So how do I enhance it by going back to the milestone developmental milestone and that developmental milestone gives you the whole program of how to enhance those qualities and when you have done those qualities how do you test it out is your wellness so similarly you can look at effective communication and that has got inputs again from milestones again so you have intellectual uh, intellectual development you have emotional development and you have social interactions even if you take those three, that will add to your effective communication. So like that, you can map all these eight areas of development with these five output areas. And that will tell you what goes in where. And if you feel anything is missing, you go back to the developmental areas and start developing those. And you will again ultimately come back here and find it better. So, so that is how you can you know, you can look at it from that side. So both sides. So that's why I said it's a it's a flow. As long as you understand the flow, you will be able to execute it very easily. So anytime you have this doubt in your head that hey, am I? Do I have? How do I develop citizenship? Then go back into the developmental areas, and you will find out what programs you can implement. What you know, what kind of skills you need. And that will tell you. So developmental milestones are input. Output evaluation is this. So on the way, when we do tests, like you know, you have midterm test and you have unit test, and those tests are based on developmental milestones. But the final exams is made up of five strands. So think like that. So once you have the final product and you want to test that, hey, have I got everything? Then that evaluation is your five strands. But on the journey, if you want to test that, am I, you know, my people are getting that or not, then use developmental milestones. That will give you very clearly about the steps. That will give you a clear idea about what areas to develop, how to do it, what, you know, subset of that also will be informed there. So that is the whole concept. If you take the whole journey, that you'll understand. So that is how even the whole curriculum of the, you know, internationally, everywhere, even the curriculum of schools and colleges are developed like that. Because they evaluate what is the end product they want, and then they sketch it out the whole journey. What do I start with my children? And that in each class they go and then ultimately this is what they get. And that is the thought behind even the vocational schools. See, I want in vocational output, I want, say, a plumber or an electrician. What kind of plumber and electricians I want? Now, for that, again, the program should be created. So it can, this whole philosophy is so practical and so scientific and logical that it can be implemented everywhere. And the beauty of this values orientation is that it is not, then the work does not remain just as a mere work. And the work rises to a level of offering. It rises to a level of you know, a dedication, a contribution into the nation development. So even if I have to sweep my floor, I'm not sweeping the floor. I'm contributing in the cleanliness of the environment. See, it's a lofty feeling. It's a feeling of oneness, you know, that you, you understand that I'm no less. And today, if you look at it, a practical example, even Corona, with all its negativity, I would say has uh, taught us a lot of good things, if I may put it in a simple way. See, one basic thing which I find very interesting about uh, this thing is that 
we started appreciating every strand, every society. You know, uh, people who come and pick up our garbage and people who clean the roads, people who are contributing in keeping us safe. See, all of them, we are not appreciated all the time. We tend to neglect them. We take them for granted that they will come and do their job. But today we are clapping for them. Why? Because suddenly there is a value which has come by default to understand that, oh my God, if, if not for them, imagine what would be the state of affair. They are called in essential services. Please come and clean up. And if they don't do it, you have to do it yourself. So how much gratitude one starts feeling when you understand this? So that is why I said this is like a beautiful journey. And value orientation is the key in your contentment. And as long as people have knowledge, people have skills, but they don't have value orientation, they will always remain in their limited selfish zone and they can never be a contributor in the society they can never you know present themselves as you know here i am so that is a mistake actually so that's why i said to you uh, value orientation is a key for life and that is how you can find fulfillment and develop yourself so i think my time is also up and thank you for your one good question which has Thank you, Viva, for the nice question. At least uh, you brought out something that I had kind of missed to relate. So, so here we close for this today. And uh, I would look forward for your questions and suggestions. And as I mentioned, I would like to do a, a panel discussion on uh, various topics. People who are interested to join, please send me a note. You can uh, email me or you can send me a note here. And I would be happy to talk to you separately and then plan out a, a panel discussion to, uh, to discuss and to find you know, all the issues related to the topics so far we have discussed. So thank you once again. And God bless you. Be safe.